Hey everyone, this is Ren with Strong Girl Knits. So some of you might know me on Instagram as Girl with the Rabbit. Um, I'm also Girl with the Rabbit on Ravelry and I do own an Etsy store. Uh, when I was considering starting this podcast, I was going to do that, but I had or go with Girl with the Rabbit. But I already started my booktube under that and after just kind of see how everyone else runs their podcast and how I would like to run my podcast. I, I will of course be talking about my knitting and other crafting things, but really any other life stuff I would talk about would be about my lifting. I, for anyone that doesn't know, I am a power lifter. I do compete. It's nothing professional or anything. It's just something I want to do that James, my boyfriend, got me into and it's just what I do. So. Uh, so yep, that's what the name of this podcast is going to be, Strong Girl Knits. But, as I said, my name is Ren. I am 24 years old, I've been knitting for about 10 years now, and it's definitely something I enjoy. I enjoy creating something out of just a ball of yarn, and then I make something beautiful, and of course it is very calming for me, and I love that aspect, so... Uh, not sure what else to say, so we'll go ahead and move on to my whips. So first thing I'm doing right now is, and this is in my own bag that I made, uh, let's see, this is, I'm making a sock for James. I love this colorway. This is just a 72 stitches on a size zero and just knitting whatever. Uh, the yarn is Premier Yarns. It's the Wool Free Sock sock yarn. This is the great colorway. Um, I've knit James at least four pairs of socks now, and he really loves them. But he says they get a little too hot, so he can only really wear them like when it's really cold. Which, you know, I live in southern Indiana, and he gets a lot of use in them once winter finally hits. Because it can get so freaking cold here. But... I figured I wanted to try this because my mom also said the same thing. She she loves the socks I made her, but they get really hot and she can only wear them when it's extremely cold. But so I'm gonna try this wool free sock yarn, see how James likes it. I knit myself a pair out of diversity and I really loved it. It was I think they're really comfortable. So James is the guinea pig. <laughs> And that's just the first sock. I haven't really worked much on that. Uh, the other one, other sock I'm doing, this is for mom. And I believe I bought this off of someone's D stash. Again, this is just like a plain sock. <laughs> plain sock on size one and a half. Sorry about the lighting. Ah. Anyways, <laughs> it's just simple sock and it is the Deb Deborah Norville collection, Serenity Sock Weight. It's colorway Harlequin. Yes. Now I don't always use inexpensive sock yarn, but I do for people that are not me. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, it's it's really nice, and I like I said, I got this off of someone's D stash, and it was extremely inexpensive. So it was just like, yeah, it was. Again, this is 72 stitches on a size one and a half. I started knitting it and it was going to be for mom or James and I showed, James didn't, didn't care either way if they were his or not and I showed mom and she loved it so automatically her socks. Alright, the next thing I'm knitting and I have to show the bag I'm using because I bought this at the Southern Indiana Fiber Festival that was last weekend, October the 23rd and 24th. I bought this from Luna Bud Knits. Oops, sorry. It's embroidered. This is completely embroidered and it's made out of a sturdy felt. I really love this. It was, I think I only spent like 30 bucks, maybe less than that. And like I said, I really love this bag and it's perfect for just like a knitting tote. I can throw my wallet and everything in there. And in here is James's flax sweater. I'm using, um, oh, what is it? It's the gray colorway. It's 100% acrylic. This is for James. 
nitpicks. It's nitpicks brava. Anyways, I really love this. I've already finished the armholes and started working under working the body. As I said, this is Flax by this Tin Can Knits. It's a free pattern. And here it's I'm sorry they're great black and black and white photos. But anyways, this is a very nice pattern. It's written for let's see. They did a variety of sizes, uh, from infant to 4XL, and it's very cr clearly written. It's very nice. Um, like I said, I've only worked past the armholes, but everything, again, was very clearly written. Haven't had any problems at all, and I've been knitting this so quickly. This is worked on a size 8 with worsted weight yarn, and then the, the ribbing is all worked on a size 6. So... I'm really excited for that. My plan is to get this done before Christmas for James. I've, so far, clothing-wise, I've only knit him, well, I, I knit him one sweater vest shortly after we started getting together, or <laughs> shortly after, after we got together, and, um, it's very nice. It took me a little while. It was, I was getting back into my knitting again, and then I knit him this really extremely nice sweater vest. Uh, with the king the diamond pattern and everything I finished it took me about a year because it was driving me insane and come to find out James has had grown too big for the sweater so it is now mine so I want to knit this for him <laughs> and so he has a sweater that is his and it fits him uh, good gracious so that's all I'm currently knitting on besides oh I am knitting on like a cotton rug for my mom, but I will show that next time. Uh, as for finished objects, I haven't gotten a lot done. I've been working on a lot of bigger projects like the sweater and socks aren't bigger projects, but I just keep going back and forth when I don't want to work on the sweater or I don't want to take the sweater with me. But I have finished a bunch of washcloths and this is just me kind of using up uh, scraps that my ma had. So just simple little washcloths. My family, so this one I worked double on a smaller needle and it just, I was like, uh, this is too, too tight. So I just bound it off real quick. It's not very big at all. Uh, anyways, my family loves washcloths. So it's never, I never have too many washcloths because I can give them away as presents and they love them. Now here are, I have little scrubby, I don't know if you can really see it, how it's kind of, a little fuzzy this is called scrub it I can't remember what the brand is and I'll put it down here but I love this stuff my mom bought it as a Christmas present for me last year she got these three colors for me and they are perfect for like with like actually using on your body whereas like this the peaches and cream or whatever brand it's a little rough and like you can use it but it's just not not as soft. I like to use them for dishes. Whereas these guys, I I use them for my face every morning. I don't, my face doesn't feel tore up, but I feel like I'm cleaning my face. Whereas, you know, let's say with these, sometimes it kind of feels like I leave a residue behind. And I also feel like with this kind of cotton, you have to wash it first before you use it, which sucks because, or at least for your skin, because it just feels like there, you leave a residue behind, but it sucks because when you wash it, the color kind of fades, and it's like, oh, well, I didn't get to use my pretty washcloth. So, anyways, these are dishcloths, <laughs> and these are my washcloths. So, I really love them. That's technically all I have finished, uh, so I will go ahead on with uh, things I've acquired lately. I really don't buy very often. I have plenty of stash, and... I like to try and use up what I have, unless I have like a big project in mind, so I buy the yarn and go from there. So, alrighty, so like I said, I went to the Southern Indiana Wool and Fiber Festival, I believe is how, what they refer to it as, and I got some pretty goodies. So like I said, I got the bag from Luna Bud, Luna Bud and I also got this bulky weight yarn. And it's funny because I I bought them, didn't really, you know, process what I'd bought until I walked away. 
and I got them to match <laughs> without even thinking. But yes, this is so pretty. It's, it's actually doing a pretty good job picking up that color. And it is, oh my gosh, I love her stuff. I met her, I believe shortly after, because I've been going to the Southern, that festival, festival for about six years now, maybe seven. I'm not sure. Anyways, at least six years. We'll go with six years. And I met her shortly after she started up as an Etsy store and she now has her own business and I love her to death. She's so sweet. She's always got bright, beautiful colors and she loves her glitter and she just, she's an amazing woman herself. So, and even though we only really see each other once a year at these festivals, she always remembers who I am. Or at least remembers my face, because I half the time I can't remember names. So, <laughs> but yes. Anyway, this is beautiful. I probably gonna knit a hat. I don't know. We'll see. It's bulky weight, and I actually really do love bulky weight yarn because things knit up so quickly. Alrighty, and then I ah uh, no sorry. Okay, well. Anyways, this touchdown, it's by, sorry, Alpaca, Alpaca with a twist touchdown, and I got the, does not have a color name, blue, we'll just call it the blue. So a friend of mine at, I got six skeins of this, enough to make a pumpkin ale by Usola Teague. I do not like orange. So it does not complement my skin tone very well, so I was not going to do orange at all. But I really wanted to knit it, especially another woman in my knitting group was like, what, you know, she watches um, the Canadian, Sarah from the Canadian Knitter podcast, and she's, I love her by the way, if you haven't checked her out, go ahead and check her out. She knitted the Pumpkin Ale by Usola Teague, and... I'd been watching her and I was like, oh, you know, that looks really pretty. It looks interesting. And then Usola, for her birthday, I believe, put up, put her um, patterns on sale, like 25% off or something. And I went ahead and bought it. I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and buy it. I don't know if I'll ever knit it, but I want it. And then I was talking to a woman at my knitting group and she was, uh, we're a fairly new friend. And she was talking about it, and she's like, oh, you know, I'd really love to knit it. I was like, oh, so do I. I already own the pattern. And so we have decided to go ahead and knit, do a little knit along together. At least, we're not starting it right now. We kind of want to work on some other things. But, um, yes, we're going to do that. And I swear I got more yarn from there, but I can't remember. <laughs> uh, anyways, so I tried to learn how to spin, and I took took a class of about two hours no about an hour and a half away from where I live and the first day I went and I learned how to spin do the single singles and then when I went to go to the second class a week later to learn how to ply and everything I had a car accident and I hadn't been able to go since and that's been a few months now but thankfully at the festival they were doing demonstrations for drop spindle and I explained to the woman what had happened and how I knew how to spin I just didn't know how to ply which really I, sh I guess I could have just YouTubed it but I don't know I was kind of upset and everything about it she, and she's like oh come on you know come on down I'll, I'll teach you how to ply I can show you a couple different ways I was like oh perfect and now I know how to spin I at least know how to, <laughs> to ply pretty I know how to do a two ply so anyways they had of course fiber there as well and there's this lovely woman who owns Sunny Bee Fibers. And I only paid 10 bucks for two 7 ounces. I, I thought that was a good deal. I mean, I didn't want... I know it, it definitely goes by price. But, um, I mean, by weight, you know, let's say I, I could get double that and be spending 20 bucks. You know, it's not... But... I, I didn't want to spend a whole lot since I was, I am still kind of getting my feet wet <laughs> with spinning, drop spindling. 
but this was just so pretty one big beautiful bat the rainbow is a purple it's so pretty <laughs> oh my gosh it is so pretty and I couldn't stop petting her fiber she had like every, almost everything is bats and um I, I like bats where you can just kind of you know I can just pull it where it's and don't have to do a lot of drafting or it's a lot easier to draft directly from the bat from what I've done so far maybe that's not the case but that's what I think and um, I don't know it was just so pretty she had so many pretty colors I definitely want to um, buy more you know spin this up and buy more from her so she had such pretty stuff alrighty so uh, okay, so uh, a while back, Br uh, British Bay Knits, she's on Instagram and Ravelry as that. She also dyes yarn. She had a uh, contest where like you knit her Buffy socks and like whoever who they thought had the best won. So I won and I got, uh, I touched the fire and it freezes me. That's a Buffy the Vampire reference and I got it on Sparkle. I don't know if you can there you go you can see that sparkle I'm not an orange fan I'm really not and but this was so pretty and I've seen it knit up and it's extremely pretty she does such a good job making self because this is hand dyed and she does such an amazing job doing self striping hand dyed yarns and I love the pattern I love her she's such a sweetie and she definitely tells it like it is which I love that and so I got this and I also won oh I also won some little like sock size stitch markers and I will show you oh my gosh that little teeth oh sorry teeth anyway so I got that and she got she sent me some candy but I haven't really um eaten it yet not that I don't want to it just <laughs> With my lifting, uh, currently I am on a pretty strict diet. I've lost 13 pounds, so and it's for it's for competition. Uh, anyways, and then I also got this shirt. Oh, bitch, that is a Spike reference from Buffy. If you haven't, if you have not watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you totally should. <laughs> All right. Uh, I also bought this recently, Jane Austen Knits. I don't know if they have at least five uh, editions out right now and this is by interweave press it's really nice I actually love <clears throat> I love the patterns in this I mean any of them they always have such pretty intricate designs and it's although they so far what I've done does they don't uh, they're not very difficult I mean they are concentration wise but I don't know I feel like if you just sit and work, you can, you can knit any of them. But I just love the styles. They're all very pretty. Some things I don't think I would make to knit for everyday wear, but they're still extremely pretty to look at. There are a few in here that I would love to knit. There's a, there's one uh, sweater sweater that I would make for James. And there's actually this extremely like thick shawl. It's called the Fanny Winter Shaw that I want to make. So, but anyways, this is really good. If you haven't checked it out, um, if your local yarn store has it or Barnes and Noble should have it, give it a look. All right, now for the last bit of my acquisition, and I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm taking forever with this. But, um, so a friend of mine, she wants to do a Christmas swap and I love her to death. I'm not gonna mention her, her right now. But, um, anyways, she, she asked me what I, she always asks me, what do I want? And I tell her and she'll, she knits it for me. And then I try and do the same for her, even though half the time she never tells me what she wants. So anyways, uh, she's going a little, leave it at that. Anyways, so I bought, I went ahead and bought the yarn for the pattern I want that I would like for her to knit this year. And I got, it's a burgundy this is a 
80% acrylic, 20% wool, and it's 328 yards in this thing, and I got it for seven bucks each. I was so excited, and it's so pretty. I really, because I want a capelet this year, and this, I feel like, goes pretty well with my skin. I was going to pick up a gray, but uh, I do have a lot of grays, so I think some color would be nice. So I got that. I got to send that off to her. And then I also bought this. Super. It's Ella Ray Mega. And this is, I guess, now discontinued. It's 100% wool. Um, this does not have a colorway. I hate when they do that. Just give it a color. Just say blueberry. I don't care. Anyways, um, this is 137 yards. And I want to make kind of like a, a wrap or a... I don't know, kind of, just imagine like a giant cow, but it covers, covers your arms. So, that's what I want to make with that. And for my last bit, I bought a sock ruler. I'm super excited. Um, cause I, like I, I do like to knit socks for James and my mom, and I do have a couple friends that I would like to knit at least one pair for. But just trying to measure their feet and everything is annoying, and I don't want to, I didn't want to make tons of templates for for each foot so I bought this this should make everything easier I hope so <laughs> um, so that's all for now uh, hopefully I'm not sure when I'm going to record next maybe like two weeks uh, we'll see it's just I'm just going with this see how I like it and go from there now if you don't want to hear anything about my lifting or really anything else. Uh, I will see you guys next time. So bye. All right. So as I said, I am a power lifter. I've been lifting for over a year now. This it all started with uh, James and I have been together for three years now, and he went to the gym, and I like to go with him just to spend time with him and whatnot. And I've always been athletic. I just. I always need like a team setting. I, I can't just like go to the gym and okay I'm going to just do whatever. I always need a set plan or a team to work out with or something. So like I said, I hung out with him all the time and one day he was just like well hey how about you actually lift something, you know do something. I was like alright fine. And then shortly thereafter he asked or we had been, we had done at least he had done at least two competitions and you know I watched it and I was like you know I I can do this I, I could do that and I hadn't really seen very many women at either competition and he had another one planned for Bloomington Bloomington Illinois and this was about six months out and he asked me if I wanted to do it and he gave me a, a deadline of you know you have to decide by this point if you're gonna do it or not I was like yeah sure jumped in and I haven't really looked back since. I've done at least five or six competitions now. I love every minute of it. Uh, it's extremely fun and it of course is keeping me active and healthy. Well, healthy is a relative term. <laughs> I have hurt myself and it's not like I eat the best. I still eat cookies and everything but I don't know. My So my recent lifting journey I my last competition was in St. Louis. It was a national competition. I was all pumped for it and everything. I had to cut weight. I only had to cut a pound, about a pound. I had to weigh in at like 138.8 pounds. I managed to do it with some struggle cuz there was I wasn't I was unemployed at the time and just I wasn't really concerned about watching my weight at the moment. I mean I was. I was watching my diet but not as closely as I should and I ended up having some real bad stomach problems during the competition. I didn't do horribly but I felt like I did horribly. I didn't set any new personal records or anything so in my mind that was horrible and I lost <laughs> if I had been if I had lifted like five more pounds I would have had first place and if I would have been like a pound lighter in weigh-in I would have I could have had second place so because how lifting is it's of course your total weight so your best squat bench and deadlift and that's totaled and then if you tie somebody whoever's lighter is considered 
the stronger person. So the girl at that one, second place, and I were tied, but she weighed in lighter, so she won. Boo. <laughs> Anyways, and I walked out of there. We were driving home, and I looked at James. I was like, I, I don't want to have to worry about cutting weight. I want to walk in at any time, you know, lose weight, walk in at any time, and compete. So he he's like, all right. He thought about it. We went around, or he, we were talking the next day, and he's like, how about this? You lose weight, but you go ahead and shoot for the next weight class. I was like, you know, I agree to it. I mean, losing weight's losing weight. And so I have lost, well, since the start of the year, because at one point I was 143 pounds, I have lost 15 or 16 pounds. But uh, for the competition sake of saying, you know, this is when I want to lose weight to now. I've lost about 13 pounds, so I can, I'm excited. This Saturday I compete first time at this new weight. Uh, it'll, it'll be interesting. I have had some difficulty with some deadlifts at the moment, but I don't know. Overall, I'm excited to see what happens. This is a new weight, so these are considered all new PRs or personal records. So I'm not going in there. I'm not going to tear myself down if I don't hit the personal records I had prior. And I'm certainly going to be proud of myself that I've lost. I lost this weight. So, and of course I love competing. Uh, powerlifting is definitely one of those sports that I find, um, it is an extremely competitive sport, but usually your biggest competitor is yourself. And you're, you're always trying to beat yourself. Yeah, you try and beat others, but in my mind, at the end of the day, you always want to beat yourself. Be better than what you were last time. And the other competitors have always been super nice. I've pretty much every meet that I actually went and talked to other women, they were always extremely nice, very um, supportive. I, my first meet, it was so nice. The girl... I think it was actually her first powerlifting meet. She had been doing CrossFit prior. And she came up to me afterwards and she's like, oh, you did so great. Um, we and we were totally different classes and everything. And she she pretty much cheered me on and I cheered her on. And, and then our local meets, I've, I've actually met quite a few women here in town that, that compete and they are so sweet. We've gotten to know each other. We cheer each other on and uh, you know, it's never, it's always nice, you know, of, oh yeah, I beat you, but we're, we're always more proud that the other, you know, that we have moved forward, not moved back or anything. So, I don't know. I'll be excited. I, it'll be interesting. Like I said, I've, I'm down to about 128.8, which if I weigh it, that'll, that is the next weight class down. I have to be 128.8 or below to be be in the next weight class for the competition. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, if you guys ever have, or if you have any questions about lifting or me lifting, I'm not an expert by any means at all. James does all my coaching and uh, he sets up my program and everything. But I don't know. I would love to talk to people about it, what you guys do and whatnot. Um, and I always think it's best, or I always think it's great, you know, getting to cheer on other people and just getting to talk. Because I know there's quite a few, there's a couple women on my Instagram that they're working on losing weight and just kind of bettering themselves. And it's always so, so exciting to see their, uh, their progress and whatnot. So, anyways, uh, thanks for sitting here and listening to me. I know this is kind of a short podcast. That's what I like to do. Uh, hopefully I will never have a super long podcast because <laughs> that is not my style. So, and maybe next time I will bring Sherlock the rabbit on and he can say hi and whatnot. So anyways, thank you so much for listening to me and I'll see y'all next time.